so not about Tommy. You never. Tommy is really the go at the flow guy. Like, hey man, that's all yeah. he just did. <laughs> but I think eventually someone would push him and he'd just lose his shit. I don't think that's possible. That, to me, that'd be the goal of the producers from both shows, our show and whatever reality show is. We could just try to break them. That'd be the goal. Well, then, then you're compromising the contestants of the other reality shows. There's prizes involved. Yeah, I think you so put they them don't in shitty t- reality shows so that like you're not. Why doesn't the like, show farmer be farmer wants a wife stuff like that? Huh? Like farmer wants a wife and things like that. Why can't? Okay, how about this? The show is just called Break Tommy. All right. And you just put him in situations, yeah. and you let everyone know this is the guy behind the line at the place. He doesn't, you know, but he thinks. Okay, here's the thing. But he thinks he's on like, hey, Tommy takes America. You're just gonna put him behind yeah, like the that, line, like that Bert uh, Kreischer show. Exactly. Yeah, You're gonna yeah. put him behind the he line. He thinks that's what it is. You're gonna put him behind the yeah. line of like a, a restaurant. But what you don't know is everyone's in on it. Like, nah, but what that was the done. What's wrong with you? Someone Tommy? did that on FX. What, were you just gaslight somebody? No, everybody was in on it except Joe one guy, Schmo. Joe Schmo. It was a good show. Well, you could do a version yeah. of that and it just you every, you just gaslight Tommy and see if you can get him to go – To just rattle. You guys are fucking crazy because yeah. I don't I, – my money's on to, on Tommy it Buns. Would, it, it would take a lot. Or just put him in like, you know, okay, it's Tommy Takes America, mm. Tommy, and today you have to go to karate class because we're going to film you. You just pay one kid to just kick him in the nuts the one entire kid, time. All the, the kids. Instructor, <laughs> the instructor. The oh, instructor. Like everyone is just kicking the shit at yeah. him where he's like, hey, man, yeah. uh, you hit me a little hard, bro. Like I'm just here for the day. Like everyone's just kicking the shit out of him. Hey, man. Hey, man. We, went, we went and saw him in uh, Virginia Beach. He told me. He was awesome, man. God, he's, he's really a tremendous hilarious. comic. God. We got to get him back on the podcast and we got to get Barry Katz back on the podcast. And a lot of tweets about that. Bert is uh, going to be in my town this week. Bert is in your guy. Uh, well, this will air three weeks oh, from now. Never mind. Three weeks ago, Bert Kreischer was in my town. Bert's a tremendous comic. I'm gonna go see him this weekend in Richmond. Yeah, he's, oh, at the Funny Bone. Yeah, he's gonna be Funny Bone. What? <laughs> I've never met him. I've just heard him on your show. Make sure you go say hi to him. I will. Yeah, I'm gonna send him a tweet or something. Give him a big hug for me. Yeah. Great comic. You got to get in touch with Ralphie. I will. And. You got I'm just what so glad you're here. I wish this was like oh, a five I know, hour man. podcast. Dude, I just appreciate you're you. gonna do yeah. Rogan's and uh, that'll Doing be like wrong. hours. That's You'll what I hear. Time. Like and I'm a talker, so I, apparently that's gonna go well. We and got Corolla, Rogan and Corolla's Corolla's a well oiled machine, they'll that's have you out of there. It's just like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So like this and is Scar like Scar Brothers, going to see Scar Brothers. Too. They're very well oiled machine. I heard it's like you're in and out in ten minutes. You're in and out. What's weird yeah. is they do a segment before they bring you on. Which I didn't understand why I had to be there at eleven o'clock if they were going to talk until eleven thirty. I could have walked in at eleven thirty and been out at eleven thirty-five. You become yeah. at a certain age, yeah. you become obsessed with time. You realize mm-hmm. I'm halfway through life. That half hour I could use to live my life, not in the waiting room at Earwolf Studios. <laughs> <laughs> we all got to realize, like I started listening to podcasts. I listened to you and Scarborough Country, and those are the two I listened to. And so, like for me to be on these things is like. It's like, you know, it's like me playing for the Jets. I mean, it's it's amazing. Like, this is, I just, I'm still a podcast fan. Like, it gets me really I love excited. It. I love listening to podcasts. Mm-hmm. And the Scholar Brothers, I would like to have on this podcast because I I don't know if anyone sat and spoken to them. Like, I don't know, if I don't know how sit. they divide up. Yeah. Can they sit for an hour and talk uh, about Yeah, it? they can do it. Because yeah. they host the Jim Rome show, too, and that's three hours. Yeah. But I don't know how, if you've ever seen them live, I don't know how they divide up. Like, you go, well, how did Lennon McCartney decide who sings what at what time? Like a day in the life, there's a Lennon verse, there's a McCartney you think they verse. Just do, they just they break it up, or they just na- naturally do it. No, they break it up like a Beastie yeah. Boys song, like where it's Ad Rock, MCA, yeah. and you know, like they, they, I don't know how they do it. Like they finish each other's sentences yeah. in a stand-up show. It's like they're twins or something. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> what if you ho- what twin hoarders ever? No, and no Siamese hoarders. That would be awesome. The, so your dream hoard would be Alex. two sets. Of Siamese twin hoarders. So that'd be four people total. With two bodies. Yes. And four, and four bags of stuff. And lots and lots of shit. Tons of shit. In Target bags. Yeah, it's always Target bags. Why is it always Target? They're the nicest oh, target. bags. They're very thick. They're much thicker than any other bag out there. That's target. like high quality bags. I could live in Target. What, yeah. That show, what was it? Career Opportunities, that movie? Were they in the store after dark? Was it a Target store? Because let me tell you something. You lock mm. me in Target after dark... 
I'll make it so that place never fucking opens, and I will live in Target. They you got could good live hot for dogs. A long in tar- time, man. Huh? You could live for a long time. Hell, you could hunt in Target. <laughs> hey, do we? How many, do we? Are we done on time? Are we have a second or no? Yeah, go ahead. Basketball, man. This is a big week. This is like my favorite. It's not going to be on time. It's three weeks okay. from now. Well, I'll talk to you about it. I'm rooting for Lamar. Bob, did you see what he did with the seniors? That was awesome. Uh, I love that you flew here and from the plane. You said. I said, "What time can you hit the house?" And he said, "Well, that's where you have to plan. I have to take a shower." Yeah, I had. I went. Oh, I was going to go to a horde, and so I drove out to. Today like, you were going to go to a horde. Yeah, and I drove out way out to um, Corey Chalmers' place, which is another guy on hoarders, and we were going to go look at a horde together. And then we ended up not doing it. We just did. Another, we did one. We just got high. We did. <laughs> shit. <laughs> Me and Corey just got high. I never. It's crazy. I never see the guy. Like, although we're both cleaners on the show, I hadn't seen him. In, so you didn't want to waste your time with a horde? Well, I, I mean, I'd talked to the family like a hundred times. I knew what it was. It was just a car horde. And what, it's, we don't really car do car horde? We got, there's tons of car hordes all over the country. That's They're a show fascinating. Called, that's a show called Bankruptcy. Yeah, but I mean, these guys have like hundreds and hundreds of like, like this, like these, these guys are all over the country. There's a ton of them in California. I don't know why they're all here, but there'll be like a guy like. I'll tell you why. Why? No, the cars are in pristine shape because the weather's always that's, 70 yeah, I guess degrees. That's what it is. There'll be like, never, there's no salt on the roads here. Oh, yeah, because they'll be like right off the 101 and they'll be like, I have 400 Thunderbirds. How is that a problem for anybody? Yeah, I'm like, sell them. But then the problem is they are, some of them are old rusted. They've got them from around the country and they're not worth what they think they're worth. And every, most of our mail hoarders think that they should be on American is Pickers. People that hoard mails? That would be, who would that be? Someone that hoards mails. Well, Jackson. Who else? <laughs> we have. Nice callback. Elizabeth uh, Taylor. She was a ma- mail hoarder. A bit of one. Yeah. And she's reformed now. Somebody. She's we, behind the couch next to the horse. Yeah. I met, I met a, uh, this is a crazy story. I used to do these uh, like business meetings with, um, in Richmond with these old banker dudes. And it was, I was trying to just drum up business, trying to do estate cleanups. And I would go to these like tip meetings, you know, where you go to lunch with these business guys and these old dudes would give you tips of people to call on. And all these dudes were like 75 years old and they had all gone to college together. And for some reason they let me at age 30 into their little group. And I had to put a suit on and it'd be, old, it'd be over the Jefferson where you stayed, that really fancy hotel. Yeah. And I get in there and one of them was talking about uh, how in college – Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor had come to the university to film a movie. And this one guy goes, man, my roommate had to go fuck Elizabeth Taylor every week, every afternoon, because Rock Hudson wouldn't fuck her. <laughs> and I'm listening to these 80-year-old dudes talk about their roommates fucking Elizabeth Taylor. I like how he said it like it was a problem. Yeah. Like, man, he had to mow her lawn yeah. every week. Yeah. He was, he was an extra, and that was his job. He was like the double for Rock Hudson. And so he, his job was to go fuck Elizabeth Taylor in the afternoon. You ever watch old Rock Hudson movies? He was badass, wasn't he? He was gorgeous, and he's a great actor. And if you watch the uh, like Written on the Wind and like a lot of the Rock Hudson movies, the dialogue, if you pay attention, there's a lot of fucking, hey, guess what? I'm gay jokes written into the Is script. It? Yes. It's hell- like Written on the Wind specifically. Him, I guess it's Doris Day. Like they have lines to each other where you go – they must have like written this. It's hysterical. But back then, no one would have thought. No, but so, now yeah. that you know that he's gay, it, like the poster guy for gay, the poor guy. And but I never really watched anything Rock Hudson. But when you go back and watch a Rock Hudson movie, like he's Clooney and Elvis combined. He's like yes, the he hottest. Is Clooney, that's the truth. He's the hottest, coolest, and he's like a good actor. Yeah. I'm not sure where that leaves us podcast-wise. Eh, let's end up with more dead cat stories. What do we got? What is the most amount of dead animals you've seen? Have you ever seen like a, a, a like where it was like a holocaust of animals where you went, I don't know if this is so much a horde as a mass grave? Well, yeah. I mean, I, we, had, we stopped counting at 200 cats one time. Come on. Um, yeah, because... It, Two hundred and one cats is uh, is considered a felony. <laughs> but, really? Yeah, but a hundred in this state and one hundred ninety nine was not. <laughs> so we stopped. What's two hundred? The push for the book? Yeah, it's the push. I, uh, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, it's your even. If it's two hundred, nobody, nobody, nobody wins. wins. House yeah. wins, man. So, what state was that? Your favorite? California, Jersey. Oh, in Jersey, two. Yeah. Wow, two hundred and one cats mm-hmm. is a felony. Yep. One hundred and ninety nine cats. This, this dude was in the cops. Even looked, they were like, "You're gonna stop at two hundred, right?" We're like, "Yeah." 
We we everyone they didn't was want in that on, paperwork. No, no, they didn't want this guy was a good guy. It was a private job. It he wasn't. Sounds quarters. delightful. Well, he got two hundred fucking dead cats in his house. How? Yeah. I like how everyone's a nice guy to you. Well, yeah, like, it has, it has to this be. is my buddy Ronnie. Got out of jail, murdered a guy, stomped his face in. Nine years, great guy, <laughs> great good guy, just a good people. Just, you know good what? People. He's a peach. This guy had two hundred dead cats, sweetheart. That, just a guy you want your daughter to marry. <laughs> just a guy whose house is filled with Target bags with shit in them, and good so person. many dead cats that we had to stop counting so he wouldn't go to jail yeah. and be raped every day because he was the cat yeah. killer. He's a good guy, man. It's fucked up, man. You know I love a feline, right? This has been a production of Smodcast Internet Radio. Oh, not about Tommy. You never. Tommy is really the go at the flow guy. Like, hey, man, that's all yeah. he just did. <laughs> but I think eventually someone would push him and he'd just lose his shit. I don't think that's possible. That, to me, that'd be the goal of the producers from both shows, our show and whatever reality show is. We could just try to break them. That'd be the goal. Well, then, then you're compromising the contestants of the other reality shows. There's prizes involved. Yeah, I think you so put they them don't in want to shitty reality shows so that like you're not. Why doesn't the like, show farmer be farmer wants a wife stuff like that? Huh? Like farmer wants a wife and things like that. Why can't? Okay, how about this? The show is just called Break Tommy. All right. And you just put him in situations yeah. and you let everyone know that everyone's in on it. Like nah, but what that was the done. What's wrong with you? Someone Tommy? did that on FX. What? Were you just gaslight somebody? No, everybody was in on it except. Joe One guy, Schmo. Joe Schmo, it was a good show. Well, you could do a version yeah. of that, and it just you, every, you just gaslight Tommy and see if you can get him to go to just rattle. You guys are fucking crazy because yeah. I don't. I my money's on Tom, on Tommy it Buns. Would, it, it would. This is the guy behind the line at the place. He doesn't, you know, but he thinks. Okay, here's the thing. But he thinks he's on like, hey, Tommy takes America. You're just going to put him behind yeah, like the line? That, like that Burt uh, Kreischer show. Exactly. Yeah, You're going to yeah. put him behind the he line? He thinks that's what it is. You're going to put him behind the yeah. line of like a, a restaurant, but what you don't know is... Every- Take a lot. Or just put him in like, you know, okay, it's Tommy Takes America, mm. Tommy, and today you have to go to karate class because we're going to film you. You just pay one kid to just kick him in the nuts the one entire kid, time. All the, the instructor. <laughs> The instructor, oh, the instructor, like everyone is just kicking the shit out yeah. of him where he's like, hey man, yeah. uh, you, 